Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, and on this channel, I help curious owners just like you along on your learning journey. Welcome to the Scratch installment of our spelling game here, where we're going to integrate our spelling little program that we created in Scratch, and we're going to integrate it with an existing game. The idea is that each word a user spells correctly, they will get a life for the game. It's basically like a token. And if you take this concept, you can apply it to any other game that uses lives out there on Scratch. It's just a way to earn lives as opposed to getting them for free. If you're not too sure on how this works, maybe check out the start of the series. Look at the cards in the top right hand corner or check out the starter projects down in the description. Okay, let's go check out the game that we're gonna integrate this with just quickly. Okay, I've got this little space shooter game called Scratch Control Blocks. It's from a previous video. Go check out the card in the top right hand corner to suss it out, or a link below is in the description for it. I've added a couple more features to this game, such as some sound effects and a score here. So all it's a pretty simple game. I'm just gonna click the green flag here. And all we need to do is shoot these spaceships and avoid the asteroids as they come hurtling down to us. And if they hit us, then the game is over. Now the idea is instead of the game being directly over, we will lose lives instead. So we're gonna integrate the spelling game with this space shooter game that we have here. Okay, I'm back over here in the spelling game. Again, there's a link below in the description to work along with me if you don't have a copy. We're gonna be using the backpack and what we're gonna go ahead and do, and you can see I've already had a little go at doing this. I'm gonna delete those. We're going to get these two sprites and we're going to put them in the backpack, okay? Because the backpack means that we can transport some code or some assets between projects. So now we've got dot and the word data in our backpack and we can go across to the scratch control box. Now we're back over here in the scratch control blocks shooter game. I'll open up the backpack. You see we've got dot and the word data here. And all we need to do is just drag them back over into the sprite pane and we will get both of those sprites for this game. So that's really neat. We've got all that logic from our game already in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna close the backpack there and we've got dot on the screen. We don't really need dot on the screen. We're just gonna hide a dot and word data is an empty sprite. The very first thing I'm gonna do is go back through each of the existing sprites in our scratch control box game here. And whenever I see a when the green flag is clicked hat block, I'm instead going to use an event and I'm going to use an event that is going to be called start game and wherever I see that hat block I'm just going to move it across to start game because currently the game starts on a green flag press but we don't want it to happen we want the spelling to start on a green flag press so that's what we're going to do doing that once in the laser we don't need to worry about it for the beam we've got it here in the spaceship where we need to do it as well so instead of when the green flag is clicked when we receive start game we've also got it over here in the asteroid sprite and we're gonna leave it for the star sprite because the star just creates the background and that's quite a nice effect. So we're just gonna leave that as it is. The last sprite that we'll need to do it to is on the stage and I will drag that out and put that forever loop in a start game. I'm actually gonna leave this as when the green flag is clicked so we can switch to the backdrop of game because there is a thumbnail for this project too. Okay, I'm just gonna press the stop sign there and the green flag and we can see our stars build in and the game we can't play it yet. So that's what we're looking for. Now we need to start our spelling game and to do that, we're gonna jump inside word data. Okay, so I've just got a little comment here and this is what we're gonna be following to execute this to make this all functioning. So back in our spelling game, we've got this variable called correct, which is a count of the number of correct uh, words that we spell. Now instead of having correct, I'm just gonna rename this and we're gonna make this lives because every word that we spell correctly, well, we want that to be a life. So let's just call it lives instead. We're going to initiate lives here when the green flag is clicked and we're gonna set that to zero, okay? We wanna show the lines list. So let's go down into our list blocks here and we're going to show the list of lines. Let's just tick it so we can see it and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. And this is so the user can see what are the current lines that we're going to be using. I'm just gonna go back into dot and hide our results there. Okay, now we're back in word data. We wanna prompt the user and ask them if they wanna change the list. It's more just a bit of feedback. So to do that, we use the ask and wait block. And what we're going to do is ask them this. We're gonna ask them if they wanna change the lines. 
We're gonna get them to type N to continue, which N means no, but if they wanna change the lines, they're gonna right click the lines list and import those lines, okay? And we wanna do this until the answer that we get is equal to N, but not just N because we can't proceed if we've got an empty list here. We also wanna make sure that the answer is equal to N and that our length of lines is greater than zero. Now this isn't gonna be completely foolproof because if we don't have the correct format for our lines here, then this will probably break as well. So I'm aware of that, but we're just gonna work on the assumption that the person knows the format of the lines. And then we can connect this just below the show list line because after we're happy with the lines, we want to extract the words and sentences from those lines. Let's just click the green flag and test it out. So we've got the green flag now. Do you wanna import the lines? If we type N here, it won't go away because lines is currently equal to zero. Okay, so if I go ahead and import those words now, I'm going to open them and you'll see that our lines have been populated. And what I'm gonna do is I'll just delete a lot of them just so we don't have to go through the whole game for our testing purposes. And now I'm gonna type N because we don't wanna change the lines that we've got and let's do that. Great, if we quickly just test and look at our sentences and words there, we can see that we've extracted those lines that we just imported in. So that's what we want. After we've done that, let's hide the list of lines and then let's broadcast, not start game, but we're gonna start the spelling side of this. So let's start the spelling game. Okay, now we're going to work in the dot sprite. Instead of the when the green flag is clicked hat block, we're going to be working with an event hat block and we wanna be working with the start spelling game event. Let's go grab the set lives and let's put all of it there in start spelling game. We wanna, we'll hide the results directly when we click the green flag so that way they are never visible. In fact, we don't ever wanna see the results in this game so I'm just going to remove that. Okay, when we start the spelling game, we wanna make sure that we show dot on the screen and once we've played the spelling game, we need to broadcast the message and that message would be start game. And then when we receive start game, we're going to hide dot from the screen again. Remember that we just set up the start game event for the rest of our blocks or the rest of our sprites here in the sprite pane. And when dot receives start game, we're just going to hide dot and hide this spelling game. I'm just gonna give this a little test out to see how we went. Okay, so I'm just gonna click the green flag here. We can still see our lines on the screen. Do we wish to change them? Nope, we're gonna leave them as they are. Dash. Okay. Should you try to make a dash for the car? Dash. Great, so we've got the spelling game working here. I can see the laser still on the screen, so we may need to hide the laser on a green flag press or click. Let's type in dash, and then I'm expecting our game to start. Cool, so our game started. I noticed a couple of things here. We don't have any lives up here in the screen, so we will need to go ahead and change that. So on the whole, it's working pretty well. So back here in the when I receive start game hat block, let's show the variable lives, just so we can see it. And on the green flag click, let's make sure that we hide that variable. We could do the same thing with our score because we don't need to see the score until we start the game. Let's go back into our laser sprite and when we receive start game, let's make sure that we show it and on a green flag click, we will hide that laser. So you can see I just put in another line here for our lines list. What I'm gonna do now is fast forward this just so you can see that we're gonna get a couple of lives when we spell these both correctly. So you can see we've now got two lives in our game and so that's going pretty well. But there's gonna be another bug that we haven't finished yet because as soon as an asteroid hits us, the game is over. So let's go and fix that bug. So currently our game ends when our asteroid is touching the laser. So instead of just executing these sets of instructions, we're going to use an if and else block. We're gonna to check to see if our lives are greater than one. If they are are, we're gonna lose a life instead. So we need to change our lives variable by negative one. And then we still wanna clean up after ourselves. We wanna delete this clone. Else, well, that means our lives are gonna be less than one and we wanna end the game. So let's just whack that code block inside of that if block. Now you can see this is getting a little bit unwieldy and I would put all these in custom blocks, but I'm not gonna worry about that for the moment. Let's go test this out. Okay, here we are in the second word, bath. I'm gonna spell it correctly. Boom, and our game is about to start. Okay, so you can see our lives are currently equal to two. We're shooting down. Ooh, okay, and I just lost a life there. We didn't hear that sound, so we'll probably wanna move that sound into the other spot of the if block as well, but we should hear it right now. There we go. So that is working just as it should. Let's get that crash sound and let's play it when we lose a life as well. Okay. 
I reckon we're gonna leave this game as it is. There is one known bug that we're not gonna to get to in this video, and we're gonna leave that for a challenge for you to sort out. And that bug is if you don't spell any words correctly, you are still given one life in this game. So I'll set that for you as a challenge to see if you can make this game nice and sturdy and robust. But this tutorial has all been about how we can integrate our spelling game to create lives, for any other game on Scratch that also has lives. When I'm changing between states in games, I usually love to use a state machine. Go check the card in the top right hand corner, which is a video on a simple state machine that you can use in Scratch. It's really, really handy to use in your game development. So I highly recommend you check that out as well. But I hope you enjoyed this series and I hope you're ready to get busy with Python if you haven't already. So come and join me in the next tutorial where we start to transition from Scratch to Python.